right at sunrise is where you're going to have the best opportunities. That's the timing of the day that you want to be out and you want to get here before Golden Hour even thinks about starting in order to get a good successful day out. It's the best time to be out in nature because you get that nice lighting but as well as the opportunities for wildlife. Eric Burson is committed to his craft. So much so, he'll often find himself driving several hours before dawn just to get the perfect shot. Those have been some of my favorite encounters because you kind of see that intimacy of nature uh, that's not commonly too seen. Uh, and I, I, I feel very fortunate that I've kind of been able to kind of witness some of those things. With There was the short-eared owl uh, that I was able to capture, uh, a very photogenic uh, short-eared owl. Uh, another one was a snowy owl, and it was actually a snowy owl eating on a rabbit that it just caught. Um, and that was one of my favorite uh, wildlife images. I've had uh, plenty of images uh, with, uh, with deer, but the one that stood out to me was when it was uh, staring right at me, uh, when we came face to face uh, with each other uh, right on the trail. So that's kind of the, the beauty of uh, looking at some of the wildlife through the lens is kind of you see them in a more intimate setting and you kind of connect with that wildlife much more than if you were to just see them with her own eyes. Even when not shooting at dawn, Eric has found that patience and perseverance are the best path to good results. Sometimes you have to look for beauty. It's not always convenient. You know, beauty, to me, in my opinion, is, is rarely ever convenient. Sometimes you have to go out of, your, out of your way to kind of find it. This is beautiful. For today's expedition, Eric has taken us to Stevens State Forest a lightly trafficked treasure in southern Iowa that offers a great landscape to explore for wildlife or simply fall color. For me, a lot of times, this is just exploration. Then it allows me to kind of dive in and see different parts of the park, even after uh, the second or third or hundredth time. Along his photographic journey, Eric has found himself exploring many corners of the state. In fact, Eric has set a personal goal to capture images in every state park and visit as many county parks as he can. Considering his penchant for travel, achieving this goal shouldn't be too hard. While I, I certainly go for those kind of destinations, it's always kind of along the way, uh, enjoyment of what else can I find? What else can I do, discover? What else success can I have? And I've always enjoyed nature photography. I've been a nature, I guess in a way, a geek uh, for many years of my life, from hiking, backpacking, uh, fly fishing, uh, regular fishing, you name it. And that, that's kind of the delicate balance with wildlife photography is that you want to be ethical in a sense where you're not intruding within their lives or creating undue stress upon the animal while getting a successful shot. So it makes the world of sense to me is to photograph nature, not, not necessarily a studio, but this is my studio. Eric's studio time has produced some simply wonderful work with much of it having been showcased at the Iowa State Fair, county nature centers, and galleries across the state. But his favorite recent project found his work ending up on the cover of the DNR's Iowa Outdoors magazine, capturing the annual monarch butterfly migration. Last year, I was out at the Neil Smith Wildlife Refuge, and I believe I really lucked out as far as uh, capturing uh, some of the monarch butterflies uh, gathering together before the, the sun just had set over the, over the horizon. And, a cluster of them grouping around as far as uh, the tall prairie grass flowers. And, uh, and it was a, a promising sign of their return, but uh, one of the most fun projects that I did, uh, you know, helping the document as far as their migration. You know, if you're trying to find a kaleidoscope or a group of them getting together before the night closes, that you have, you have limited lighting. So the, the sun is setting and therefore your lighting is coming down and they're gonna be harder and harder to find. Uh, so that, that was the challenge as far as photographing them is that you have to bring your shutter speed down uh, considerably low that may create some uh, uh, blurriness within some of their wings, but some of that, sometimes that can create an element of itself and that's kind of the art of the photography. But the conservation element of my, my, of my photography is, you know, again, connecting that audience to, and, and bringing awareness and attention to an issue that, that you know, the, the monarch butterflies had suffered such a population drop just due to loss of habitats and other elements that impacted their populations. And 
This is what beauty of nature really is, and if we put our best foot forward, we can restore a lot of that beauty. So it's just kind of floored in a way that I made the cover and got the news, so that was very nice uh, touch come this fall to be on the fall cover, of course. Projects like the Monarch Migration are a perfect example of what drives Eric's artwork. Making art while pushing his audience to consider the world we all share. Uh, to me, photography is all about connection and what, what people have as far as connecting with that photograph. It's kind of that difference between just taking a photograph versus making a photograph. But when you actually slow down and actually frame up your, uh, your photograph or you look for something that's not necessarily seen by all, that, that to me is the difference between you know, just taking a photograph, whether it's a vacation picture, and you're making a piece of art. I want to help bring attention, bring awareness, and hopefully captivate some folks' interest and help conserving some of our, you know, our nature's beauty.